Hogwarts Legacy fashion is off the charts and I can't stop going through different outfits and looks for my character. I think Avalanche added a lot of awesome gear choices, which is why in today's video, we're going over even more of them to get. So as always, a thumbs up on this video would be awesome and let's dive right in. Now, if you were one of the few to remember the studio's Twitch drop campaign a few days back, you were probably lucky enough to get Merlin's cloak after tuning into their live stream for just 20 minutes. Of course, this required you to connect your Warner account to the Harry Potter fan site and then to your Twitch account with drops enabled. It was quite convoluted and I also stood a few days waiting for the skins to arrive but then realized on top of claiming these on the Twitch drop page, you also need to head over back to the Warner game page, sign in with your associated account and then at step 5 you have to click to claim those rewards. Once I did that, these all immediately popped up in game and I will not lie, the cloak actually looks really awesome. It's kinda sad that unless they do another stream or give it back somehow, a lot of people are going to miss this. Like the game has almost 1 million players concurrent on Steam alone and the livestream only had like less than 200k, so hopefully there's going to be a future update that does bring this back in the game. Though if you're on the PC, chances are that mods are going to fix the majority of these problems. Now luckily enough, there are some in-game alternatives with similar color schemes that you can get in case you forgot to tune in that livestream. And Amit, which is one of the Ravenclaw students that you befriend during the astronomy classes, actually introduces you to the star-eyed seer outfit by simply completing all of the astronomy table challenges in the game. They aren't that many with only 14 in total and the minigame is pretty fast as you try to fit the points with the constellation up in the sky. Each one of these will provide the scarf, then the outfit, and finally the cape that looks something like this. Especially the cape is one of my favorites, it's split in half which looks really awesome but on the back side it also features a map of the night sky with the shiny stars. Definitely more student friendly and stylish nonetheless, plus you can also bring the hood up to make it look even better, kind of like a blue thief sort of look which I really like. Now, if you're not completely sold on the outfit, which might look a bit basic, there is an alternative for that, which comes in quite early through the murky death side mission that you find in the boathouse. Here you'll have to talk to Nerida, which is going to give you a hint to take a dive in the nearby lake in order to find a secret underwater cave. Inside you'll find the mermaid artifact and once you get it, you can head over back, give it to the quest giver and she's going to provide you with the mermaid liaison uniform. This is a way more stylish and better looking option if you want something for the ice here armor and I think it fits quite well. There is however a second mermaid item but this one is from the lost astrolobe side quest that you do for Grace in the lower Hawksfield area. You're going to find her right here at the end of the dock and she's going to ask you to dive in the nearby lake to find her lost family heirloom. And once you do that, you can return back to her and this is when you're going to get the mermaid mask as a reward. And this you can combine with the venomous tentaculi robe that you also get early on from a different side quest and it's going to look something like this. I think it's a pretty nice color scheme combination, both of them kind of like greenish looking and fit very well together. So to get it, you need to talk to Duncan Hobhouse that you find in the astrology wing and he needs a venomous tentaculi from the hidden herbology corridor from outside of the classroom area. This also gives you quite a nice number of plants early on that you can repeat by the way every like 3 days or so in game so you can potentially get an infinite amount of tentaculi just from this method. But once you're done with that, you can just go back in and he's going to give you this really awesome robe that actually fits the mermaid mask I just talked about. If you want to go with a greenish looking kind of like outfit early on, this definitely fits that. But let's go over the Ashwinder look starting with the thief coat that ended up being one of my favorites actually. To get this, you just need to complete the waves of enemies found in the battle arena northwest of Hogwarts in this swamp area just outside of the Forbidden Forest. This also gives you the achievements and the robes that I think will work with a lot of setups and other cool looks. The second item is going to be the Ashwinder outfit and you get this one from another arena in the south of Irondale right here on this side of the map. As soon as the last enemy wave is defeated, this drops the Ashwinder outfit as well as the achievements and you can also use this with a lot of other color combinations since it looks pretty dope. 
And for Deluxe Edition users, the Battle Arena in the Forbidden Forest can also drop the Duelist Mask if you finish all the waves, but you do have to keep in mind that this is an exclusive one just for those who did get the Deluxe version of the game. Now, if you want to go full high-end, there are a couple of items that you can grab a bit later to combine them with the Thief Cloak. And one of them is the Socialite outfit that you get from the Birds of a Feather side quest right here from this hamlet in the second map in Hogwarts Legacy. And this you have to help someone catch a specific Deary Call nearby, and once you do that, you can head over back, and this is going to give you this really awesome white armor. You won't like it maybe at first, but if you combine it with some of the other lighter color cloaks and capes, such as for example the thief coats or some of the other options, I think this one is one of the best looks right now in the entire game. For some reason it looks really royal and very high-end while still pretty much badass. You can bring this up a notch and combine it with the legendary masquerade half mask that you get from breeding 10 unique creatures. This one is actually super simple, you just need to like place down 2 or 3 pans in each vivarium and then have different sets of beasts being bred inside of it for the challenge to be completed. You don't even have to wait for the breeding to be done. It also gives you quite a bit of XP but if you combine these the setup looks quite well but obviously you can fit it with some other builds as well. In any case, there are hundreds of options in total for pretty much every single gear piece with some of the remaining stuff I definitely recommend just grabbing it from the dozens or so treasure vaults that you find all around the map. Even though not all of them are going to give you legendaries, this was a great and rather quick way to grab new appearance options to use for later. Plus, the extra loot that you get can be sold for some extra cash, so it's kinda like a win-win situation. Probably my favorite are the combat challenge ones you get from pretty much everything that you defeat, especially in terms of spiders and the dark mages. For example, you can get the spider slayer armor which is a full bodysuit of medieval style set that you get from just defeating spider enemies. It even has sound effects of actual armor platings clanking with one another when you move with it for extra realism, so I really appreciate the extra detail. You fight with spiders by the way in a lot of quests but you can also find them plenty in the spider layers and you just have to like go there and do them if you want them a lot more quicker. There's even an open face helmet variant you can get from the main story relatively early on that you can replace the one from the spider slayer armor and it looks something like this by the way, pretty nice and also makes your character's face visible. And of course, the final look that uses the dragon hide and the protector's outfit, a super unique set that gives a cloak with a dragon skin inspired look, and I think it looks some of the best right now in the entire game. Both the protectors are easily acquired early from defeating dark wizard enemies and completing this challenge. But I like combining this with the leather wizard hat, which unfortunately is going to be a random drop, so you do have to like just farm for this, and the avenging raven mask that you get from defeating all of the 12 infamous enemies on the map. And the complete set will make any dark wizard jealous, it just looks awesome, probably not very student friendly, but I mean come on, if you look like this you're probably not going to care. And yeah, this is pretty much it with all of the remaining sets, of course there's a few other smaller pieces in there that we didn't cover, but for the most part these are the best looking ones. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.